<clears throat> Hello, good evening all and welcome to another edition of Classroom. So as we all know, we are dealing with uh, focus this week and to discuss on lung ultrasound, may I invite Dr. Neeraj Kumar, who is the director of this program. Dr. Neeraj, uh, welcome again. I hope you have got a good session for us to discuss today. And Dr. Prasanna is here with us to moderate this session. And Dr. Kapil will be joining us shortly. He will be our one of the expert faculty. So Neeraj, without wasting much time, so shall we discuss the lung ultrasound today? Plus, Dr. Prasanna, over to you. Thank you. <clears throat> As we, yeah, thank you, Dr. Punaya, and uh, welcome, Neeraj. Welcome back to the show. As we have discussed in the last time, we went uh, through the basics of the ultrasound. And as a part of first of this practical it is of how to use ultrasound, Dr. Neeraj will be demonstrating us today on how to use a lung ultrasound, what are its clinical implication, how we can use as a point of care ultrasound in the ICU, in the OT and in other areas, particularly in the emergency areas. Over to you, Neeraj. Kindly enlighten us on lung ultrasound today. Okay. Good evening, uh, everyone. So last time we have uh, uh, understood the basic principles of uh, ultrasound and uh, nobology part and the various types of artifacts. And uh, gradually we will uh, uh, move on uh, to the application of ultrasound in our clinical field. We will uh, discuss this uh, application of airway, uh, application of ultrasound regarding airway uh, uh, and the diaphragm ultrasound uh, together in the next class. Today, we are totally focusing on the lung ultrasound. And as we know that uh, in the recently we are facing a COVID pandemic era. So importance of uh, this lung ultrasound is uh, very, uh, very much uh, useful for our uh, clinician. So uh, we have decided to um, uh, learn this uh, lung ultrasound so that uh, we can empower our clinician for the better patient care of the uh, who are working in the ICU setup. So uh, as we all know that uh, this ultrasound uh, of the lung is gaining very uh, popular day by day uh, amongst the clinician working in ICU or OT or emergency uh, medicine. One has to remember that uh, uh, there are uh, lung is full of air and the air is considered the enemy of the ultrasound. So uh, traditionally, it was thought that uh, there are two barriers for the ultrasound uh, when we want to examine uh, the lung. Uh, one is uh, air and uh, other, other is bony framework. But uh, uh, gradually, we have realized that uh, though with the various artifacts that has produced by the ultrasound when we are examining this uh, lung ultrasound these artifacts are very useful to us and various types of pathology in the lungs produce a different uh, types of artifacts and uh, we know uh, so we can say that uh, lung is uh, lung ultrasound is all about interpretation of the artifacts so uh, always remember that uh, lung is uh, lung ultrasound is uh, is uh, one part of uh, this uh, solving this clinical puzzle. One has to incorporate this lung ultrasound finding uh, for this uh, clinical context of the patient to make the final uh, diagnosis. So moving further, uh, without wasting time, let's start the basis of the lung ultrasound. So we are starting with the case scenario. The, uh, the uh, first case is uh, supposed to 62 year old uh, male. Can you share your presentation? Yes, uh, I'm sharing. Uh, it is not. Uh, not yet got. You are not able to again. see it. I think okay. you should press that OK or something. You know?
screen share and share your presentation. go to share screen oh yes yes and select the application window and select your ppt and then click share yes yes sir nahi aa raha na yahan pe Now go to share, screen, yeah. sh share screen, select the application window, whatever uh, the PPT you made, select that and share, click share. Yeah. Yeah, got that. Okay. Now make it full so, screen. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Mm. okay. So we have uh, we are going to start with the case scenario. The first case is a 62 year old uh, male patient with a history of COPD and the uh, ejection of fraction of about 40 percent, and he is uh, coming with the co complaint of dyspnea. So at this situation, we are uh, we have two options: either related to a respiratory pathology or uh, cardiac pathology. And the second scenario, uh, you have received a call from the ICU. And you to evaluate a patient who is uh, recently hypoxic in condition, and uh, he has a uh, recently intubated, and uh, left sided subclavian artery also uh, central artery is also placed. So uh, in in the second case also the cause of hypoxia may be either intubation related or central artery placement related. To solve this puzzle, uh, we will discuss later. So starting with the basics, the objective of this uh, talk uh, would be, first of all, we have to understand about the normal lung. So what the normal lung looks like uh, uh, with the ultrasound. Uh, first is uh, battering sign, then sliding sign. Uh, the sliding sign is M mode is called seesaw sign. Then A, A lines and lung pulse. I will uh, try to focus on mainly on uh, we have to recognize in the, what are the features of the normal lung. Then only we will be able to uh, recognize the, the abnormal lung. So uh, the recognition of the normal lung in the ultrasound is very, very important. Then only you will be able to know this, this is not normal. And uh, uh, then uh, some pathology is there. Then we will find out what, what kinds of pathologies. So uh, recognition of the normal lung is very, very important. Then comes to the B lines. And what are the importance of the B line? We will discuss it. And after that, various kinds of pathological uh, 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 condition of the lung we will learn. So to make the things very simple, first of all, we discuss the uh, two pathology regarding to plural. Uh, one is uh, air in the pleural cavity that is pneumothorax and another is the fluid in the pleural cavity that is pleural effusion. After that, we will discuss the parenchymal disorder. First of all, interstitial lung uh, syndrome, then alveolar syndrome. Uh, amongst the interstitial lung syndrome, we will discuss pulmonary edema, ARDS. Amongst the alveolar syndrome, consolidation and atelectasis. Then we will discuss about uh, blue protocol. This protocol was devised uh, by the French uh, scientist Lesenstein, who is also supposed to uh, call uh, father of uh, this lung ultrasound. Then uh, we will uh, discuss uh, a simple algorithm. Then also we will discuss the importance of knowing this lung ultrasound regarding this uh, COVID-19 pandemic era, how this lung ultrasound can be useful uh, with the handling uh, the COVID patients. 
so what are the advantages of the lung ultrasound first of all uh, if you are uh, working in icu there are uh, there are ways of uh, uh, knowing the lung, uh, lung examination either you can do by auscultation or x ray or ct scan so uh, if you consider about uh, this uh, lung ultrasound uh, this is very easily availability is very important feature then it is very portable then it is non invasive repetitive you can do several times you can uh, do some intervention again you can see uh, whether my intervention is working or not this is very cost effective accurate it is very accurate in, in, in the hands of experts, uh, physicians. The most uh, useful and most uh, advantageous uh, position of the ultrasound, it is free from any kind of radiation. And it is, of course, this is better. So you need not to transport uh, your uh, serious patient to any, uh, any radiological departments. There are very uh, minor limitations also, like this is very uh, supposed to be operator dependent. A certain amount of training is required for the residents. And uh, sometimes it is uh, difficult in obese and uh, if, if uh, there is a large thoracic dressing uh, present. And of course, if the patient is suffering from subcutaneous emphysema, it is difficult to see inside uh, through the lung ultrasound. So advantages are too many uh, compared to limitations. So uh, first of all, I, I would like to make the thing simple. So uh, 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 try to focus on some, some of the basic concept like normal lung contains air. Okay. So normal lung is also called aerated lung. Uh, uh, and so patho as the pathology of the lung, uh, severity of the pathology increases, there is a de aeration. Okay. A amount of air decreases and amount of fluid or or fibrotic tissue increases as the pathology of the lung increases so normal lung is uh, aerated lung full of air and the pathological uh, condition of the lung is de aeration condition and the second concept uh, uh, if you see uh, the, uh, the uh, there is a pleura uh, uh, pleural line uh, between the ribs and it is very very hyperreflective surface uh, for the ultrasound so uh, uh, till the pleura all the ultrasound waves are reflected so till the pleura you can see the real anatomical structures and the beyond the pleura since uh, ultrasound cannot uh, uh, penetrate uh, beyond the pleura as the air, uh, air is uh, fill of uh, in the alveoli so uh, beyond the pleura the various types of artifacts are present and uh, you must have been uh, seen that uh, various kinds of patterns have been uh, described in, in the literature regarding ultrasound. So to make the thing simple, uh, th there is A pattern, there is B pattern, and also there is a C pattern coming nowadays. So A, A field, uh, just uh, for the sake of simplicity, A, A is uh, denoting good condition. And B is B for bad condition. And C for consolidation condition. So in this way, the things will be simpler. So a, if you are getting a, a line or a pattern, that means the, uh, the condition of the lung is good. If you are getting, uh, start getting B lines, that means uh, that means uh, the pathology of the lung is starting. If you, uh, number of B lines means uh, as the number of B lines increases, the pathology also increases. And if you are getting the consolidation pattern, uh, then you uh, some some um, uh, some uh, clinician uh, say uh, like this is a C pattern. Then uh, we can use uh, different kinds of probes, linear probe, curvilinear probe, and phased array probes, and also microconvex probes uh, can also be used. So wh uh, what I um, suggest that if you want to see uh, till the plural level, you can uh, you ha you should use high frequency probe like linear probe. But if you want to see the deeper inside, like if you want to see the accumulation of the fluid or the pathology of the lung, so you should use low frequency probe, okay, curvilinear probe or uh, this um, phased area probes. Uh, 
regarding or, or sometimes there is uh, some people may confuse regarding orientation so to make the thing simple you have to use always in a longitudinal or cranial direction okay so uh, the marker uh, of the ultrasound probe or the screen should always be uh, towards the head and regarding uh, uh, the probe placement you have to keep the probe perpendicular okay so per, uh, remember perpendicular to the pleura and not perpendicular to the, to the chest so we want to examine the pleura so you have to keep the uh, probe perpendicular to the uh, pleura and re regarding uh, regarding gravitational effect of the of the uh, pneumothorax if you uh, see the pneumothorax so air is in the, uh, accumulates in the non dependent uh, zone while fluid is uh, accumulating in the dependent zone so these are the simple concepts uh, which uh, will make the things easier uh, in the coming slides so uh, one more thing uh, that uh, i have mentioned that uh, air fluid ratio is very very important if you see this is the normal lung this is uh, th this and these are the abnormal lung okay this this is a normal lung this is full of air also called aerated lung i have already mentioned and amount of air decreases like here it is decreasing here is a severely decreased here is a the complete loss of air okay so amount of air decreases that means pathology is increasing so this is the normal aerated lung that means a lines is there if there is slight amount of air is decreasing the b lines starts appearing okay so b lines are still separated that means the moderate amount of decrease in the air if the b lines are fused together or coalescent or crowded that means that there will there is a severe decrease of the air content in the lung and about the last step that is consolidated lung there is a complete loss of air and also there is white spots or air bronchogram so what i mean to say that there is a progressive loss of aeration as the pathology increases there is a pro progressive loss of aeration so uh, now the procedural part the uh, the first scanning technique first of all uh, this is a, this is very simple we are, i uh, when we want to see uh, till the pleural level so i have already mentioned we have to use this uh, it's better to use um, uh, it's better to use this uh, high frequency linear probe although you can use curve linear probe also but what i suggest that if you want to see the pleural level uh, the, there is a better resolution with this linear probe so as you know, as you keep the probe at the mid clavicular line around uh, this second to fourth intercostal spaces in the sagittal axis so in the longitudinal axis in the cranial caudal direction i have already mentioned there is no confusion okay we, you have to keep this probe marker always on the cranial side then we will get this picture this is the sono uh, sono anatomy of this uh, uh, lung so first of all this is superior rib this is inferior rib and this is uh, we will discuss uh, uh, this thing later first of all see uh, the first video of this uh, uh, first scanning technique may i, may I request dr punaya to run first video in the first technique patient is in supine position we have taken a linear probe placed at mid clavicular line and we can see the back wing sign and the pleural movement with the respiration is called sliding sign you want to rerun no 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 that's it so uh, this is uh, all uh, uh, the previous one was the first scanning technique when we want to see the uh, uh, pleural level now this is the second scanning technique when we want to see the deeper uh, structures so uh, if, for, if you want to see the deeper structure we have to use this curvilinear probe if you suppose we want to evaluate for the pleural effusion or hematorex so uh, this is the curvilinear probe placed at the mid axillary line or uh, posterior axillary line then uh, you will get this picture uh, 
so uh, the direction is always uh, craniochordal direction so for, uh, when we use uh, uh, such um, uh, image will be obtained try to recognize this white hyperechoic curved like a structure that is diaphragm and below the diaphragm there is if if it is the right side then it is the uh, liver and if it is on the uh, left side there is, uh, this granular structure is the spleen and above this uh, diaphragm regarding this head side or cranial side our lung is situated so uh, normally in the normal lung there is a mirror image of this uh, either liver or uh, this spleen so so, uh, so normal aortic lung is not visible what you are getting uh, above the diaphragm is the mirror image of the liver or spleen so uh, i request you doubt uh, to run the second uh, video in the second technique we are using curvilinear probe placed at mid axillary or posterior axillary line and first of all we have to recognize the bright hyperechoic curved like structure that is diaphragm and liver is situated below the diaphragm and lung is situated above the diaphragm but in normal healthy lung above the diaphragm we are getting the mirror image of the liver so so uh, try to remember this first technique we have used the linear probe uh, at the mid clavicular line so uh, first a step i want to stress upon that uh, try to recognize this bony structure that is ribs identification uh, of the rib is very important the, then the subs uh, subsequent steps uh, uh, will be discussed so uh, i have made the things uh, simple so uh, try to recognize first this rib so this uh, rib is a bone so it will uh, give an hyperechoic uh, bow like a structure then hyperechoic border so this is the ultrasound picture so this is hypo hyperechoic border with hypoechoic side so this is the cranial side so this is upper rib and this is the lower rib so identification of the rib is very important then we will try to recognize this uh, uh, pleural uh, structure that is pleura so uh, this is the uh, superior rib this is the inferior rib and just 0.5 cm or 5 mm below the rib you will get this hyper bright hyperechoic structure that is pleura so identification of the pleura is very very important so remember the the normal thickness of the pleura is about 2 mm and if you uh, if you uh, can recognize this pleura is consists of two layers one is parietal pleura above and the uh, another is visceral pleura uh, below and there is very very thin uh, interpleural space uh, between the two so uh, uh, try to recognize uh, this uh, bright hyperechoic uh, line that is uh, pleura and always remember that it contains both the layers parietal pleura and the visceral pleura that are opposed to each other there is no significant space uh, between the two now the next step you try to recognize the movement of the pleura uh, uh, and uh, the first of all i want to mention that this uh, bone and this pleura both the uh, both the things uh, uh, give a bat wing sign so th this appears like a bat that uh, uh, that was uh, described by the lachinstein and this the body of the bat is formed by this pleura and the wings are formed by the ribs and saddle after that try to recognize this uh, sliding sign okay this pleural movement uh, of the uh, with the uh, synchronized with the respiration is called the sliding sign it is to and fro movement or glistening or shimmering appearance of the pleura the synchronized with the respiration is called sliding sign and what does it indicate if you if at any area you are getting this sliding sign that that means the movement of the pleura it indicates that there is ventilation in that inspected area okay and suppose it uh, uh, if you are getting this uh, sliding sign that rules out pneumothorax okay 
you will discuss the um, uh, pneumothorax later but if you are getting sliding sign positive that rules out pneumothorax and if you are not getting this uh, sliding sign that means sliding sign is absent and it is non specific main, means sliding sign absent is present in many kinds of uh, pathology like this is seen in pneumothorax this is seen in ARDS consolidation uh, even in apnea if, if there is no ventilation then also you may see uh, this um, uh, sliding sign is just absent suppose in uh, you have uh, must have seen that in the children frequently there is a right sided bronchial intubation so if there is a right side bronchial intubation means the, uh, means in right sided the sliding sign will be uh, present but on the left side it will the sliding sign will not be present because of uh, left sided apnea so uh, always remember this sliding sign is a landmark uh, uh, to uh, when you want to know the lung ultrasound sliding sign is the very very important uh, thing you have to learn so i will request to learn uh, the sliding sign video here you can see the to and fro movement or glistening or simmering appearance of the pleura synchronized with the respiration it's called sliding sign. Okay, so till we uh, till uh, this stage we have learned the battering sign and the sliding sign. Remember, we are uh, still focusing on the normal lung. I I always stress that you have to understand the the normal uh, appearance of the normal healthy lung. So normal healthy lung uh, gives an appearance of uh, battering signs, sliding sign, and a line. So we will uh, after that we will discuss the uh, pathological lung. So, so still we are on the normal uh, lung uh, appearances. So sliding sign, what you have seen in the 2D mode. Now the uh, recognition of the sliding sign in the AM mode is also uh, uh, very important. So this is the AM mode picture uh, of this uh, sliding sign. So remember, we have uh, the last class when we have learned the emote uh, emote technique. So first uh, we have to press, then this cursor appears. Then after uh, pressing twice, this lower panel gives the emote uh, image. So remember that we have already uh, learned that till the pleura all the things are real and below the pleura all the things are uh, artifact so till uh, if you look closely uh, this is uh, superficial part and this is deeper part so if you try to understand this is skin subcutaneous layer then the pectoralis major and minor muscle then it starts pleura then lung inside so all the things are a static in a structure so whenever you are encountering any static structure, then it gives a, a parallel line appearances. While below the pleura, the lung is moving. Okay, whenever uh, ultrasound uh, encounters any moving structure, then it gives a granular or sandy like appearances. This is very simple philosophy. So a straight line or parallel lines above the pleura because of a static structure of the skin, this uh, subcutaneous tissue or pectoralis major minor and the sandy or granular appearance below the pleura because of the movement of the underlying lung so uh, it gives an appearance of the uh, seesaw sign as you are uh, standing uh, in front of the seesaw another uh, uh, concept is about lung pulse if you see uh, closely this T-shaped structure, this T-shaped structure is the uh, lung pulse and this is the pleura. So what is lung pulse? Lung pulse is the movement of the pleura synchronized with the heartbeat. If you remember the, what was sliding sign, sliding sign was the movement of the pleura synchronized with the respiration. But here the lung pulse is the movement of the pleura synchronized with the heartbeat. And it, it, you can see this uh, lung pulse in the absence of sliding sign. So in the A mode, this vertical T lines of the lung pulse uh, uh, starting from the pleura to the bottom of the skin, it better recognized. So try to recognize this lung pulse in the A mode. And if you are getting this A mode, that, that is also one of the features that rules out pneumothorax. 
so if you to make the thing simple suppose th there is a heart is contracting and this is transmitting to the pleura and you are getting the pulse lung pulse but you can uh, see this lung pulse when the when uh, the sliding sign is absent we will see later then the last feature of the normal lung is a lines so we have uh, seen that this is the upper rib this is lower rib and this is the pleura so uh, we have uh, discussed that the till the pleura all the things are real because it is very a strong reflective surface all the ultrasound waves are reflected back and all the things below the pleura are the artifact so a lines are the air artifact or reverberation artifact because of air so you, if you uh, for easy remembrance a4 artifact and because of aerated lung aerated lung means normal lung so air artifact or air lines are uh, produced in the normal uh, lungs what are the features of the air lines air lines are as you can see these are bright hypercoagline these are horizontal these are equidistant from the pleura and these, these are gradually fading as you go deeper inside the uh, it gradually fades. So what is the theory behind the production of A-lines? Because we have discussed in the last uh, class that ultrasound waves are bounces back between the highly reflective surface of the pleura and the probe surface. So some of the waves are uh, again uh, bounces to and fro. So that, that's why there's a production of these A-lines. So remember the, uh, the lay lines are horizontal, regularly spaced and hyperechoic. So till now, uh, we can take a pause and uh, try to remember, collect all the things. We have, till now, we have discussed the normal lung. So normal lung recognition is very, very important. Only after, uh, after that only try to recognize the abnormal lung. Then the things will be very easier. And try to, I am just summarizing the things. The normal lung means whenever you are just scanning the lung, if you are getting this sliding sign, if you are getting this uh, A lines, that, that means the area is uh, normal. So now, we are moving towards the uh, abnormal lungs. So uh, the concept of B line is uh, very important. So uh, what is the B lines? B lines uh, starts from the uh, pleura, going to the bottom of the screen. They are laser-like or torch-like appearance. They are vertical, they are hyperechoic, and they move synchronously with the respiration or this pleural sliding sign. And they erase A lines. Okay, B lines are very, very important. I have already mentioned that A lines present in the normal lung and B lines, B for bad, you can, if you want to remember, uh, B for bad means B are, um, B are, if you are getting the B lines, that means something is bad inside the lung. Okay, again, I am repeating, A line is a laser-like or torch-like appearance. They are vertical, hyperechoic. They are starts from the pleura, going to the bottom of the screen and they erase these A lines and they move synchronously with the respiration so so uh, can we have the video of b line you can see here multiple b lines they are vertical hyperechoic torch like appearance arising from the pleura going to the bottom of the screen and moving synchronously with the respiration So uh, before I forget this, I just want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Prasanna and Dr. Uh, Kapil for providing me the useful video which I am going to present uh, in these uh, classes. So uh, we have seen the how the B lines looks like, but that's not enough. We have to understand why these B lines are produced. What is the genesis behind these uh, B lines? So uh, at at this time, this uh, this is no, we are not very certain how it is produced. But the theory is there is altered air and fluid ratio. We have already discussed that lung is full of air. If the amount of air is decreases, 
that means fluid are accumulating uh, then the, uh, if the if the fluids are accumulating first in the interlobular septa then it starts accumulating in the alveoli so now since the lung is accumulating inside the lung now they now they acts like a medium and now the ultrasound waves can pass through and when they are passing inside the lung they produces b lines that's that's the theory behind this so because of decrease in air and increase in the fluid content that's the genesis of the b lines so this is subpleural thickening of the interlobular septum by by the fibrosis or by edema so uh, regarding the quantification of the b lines so so there is a consensus that up to two lines up to two b lines they are taken as a normal Okay, normal aerated lungs can contain two lines. If it is beyond two, that if, that means if we, the, if the uh, B line number of B lines is three or more than three in any longitudinal plane between the two ribs, that is taken as uh, abnormal, or means uh, pathology that starts uh, occurring. So as the number of B lines increases, that correlate with the severity of the disease of the lung. Okay, so uh, now we are uh, moving uh, uh, towards the pathology side of the lung. So to make the things uh, simple, first we are discussing the the the, uh, the problem arising uh, due to uh, pleura. The pleura, uh, as you know, that uh, the both the pleura, this uh, parietal pleura or the visceral pleura, they are opposed to each other. That means they are just touch, touching to each other and then move with the respiration. But imagine a situation in which the uh, the air column is present between the two pleura. That is, then it uh, leads to a condition called pneumothorax. And if the fluid is uh, present between the two pleura, that is called pleural effusion. So first we will discuss the pneumothorax. The pneumothorax is very very interesting, and very very if 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 a beginner resident is try to learn, this is a very uh, easy to learn. So uh, let's see. So uh, we have discussed, uh, this is the parietal pleura, then this is the pleural pleura. In the normal condition, they are opposed to each other. But in case of pneumothorax, there is a air column present between the two layers of the pleura. So what is pneumothorax? This is a collection of the air column between the visceral, visceral and the parietal pleura. So uh, uh, in the basic concept, uh, concept of the lung ultrasound, we have discussed the air is accumulated in the non-dependent zone. So that means if the patient is in supine condition, supine position, it will accumulate in the anterior part of the chest. Uh, and similarly, if the patient is in the upright position, it will accumulate superior, uh, superiorly. So, uh, and regarding which probe uh, we should use here, so I will recommend, although you can use any kind of probe, but I will recommend that since we are trying to visualize this uh, plural content, so we, we, it's better to use the high frequency linear probe. First of all, you have to keep the probe at the mid clavicular line in the second or fourth intercostal spaces. So there is a sequence, okay. There is a sequence of recognition. First of all, we, we, we will see that the sliding sign is absent. Okay, since the air is accumulated, uh, since air is accumulated between the two pleura, now the visceral pleura cannot rub uh, or slide against the parietal pleura in the case of pneumothorax. So you will not get this visceral pleura, uh, this uh, sliding sign. So first you will get this sliding sign absent. And normally the B lines are produ produced by this uh, visceral pleura. So we'll, if, uh, so B line will also be absent. What you are getting the ultrasound is only of this picture. Anything here you cannot obtain in the ultrasound image. Similarly, the lung pulse will also be absent because now the heart contraction cannot reach to this parietal pleura and appear in the image. So sliding sign will be absent, B line will be absent, then lung pulse will be absent. That is the first step. So we have seen the sliding sign, B lines, lung pulse, any, any of the three, if you are getting, that means pneumothorax is ruled out. 
okay so uh, on the contrary if you are sliding up send b line up send lung pulse up send in the 2d mode so there is a strong suspicion of the pneumothorax and to further confirm this is the 2d picture and to further confirm uh, take a m mode picture so uh, in the m mode uh, this is the uh, uh, the feature of the normal lung this is the feature of the uh, pneumothorax lung so in the normal lung uh, the m mode produces the c sore sign we have already seen that uh, there is a c sore appearance on the contrary in the m mode in case of pneumothorax produces the barcode sign of a stratosphere sign because uh, this granular appearance we have already uh, learned that this is because of the movement of the lung that produces this granular appearance but in case of pneumothorax since we cannot see beyond the pleura so we cannot appreciate the this granular appearance of the lung so what we are getting that the mirror image of the upper part of the pleura this is the real structure and just we are getting the mirror image of this structure in the lower part of the uh, of the uh, image also so all we are getting these parallel lines so so this is the uh, this is very very important and very very interesting also uh, the uh, the resident learns uh, this technique very easily and they can recognize the pneumothorax very easily so in the m mode there is a barcode or stratosphere sign so you, you will get this straight horizontal lines above and the below the uh, level of the pleura so now you can have a strong suspicion of the pneumothorax moreover try to find out what is the boundary of the pneumothorax okay pneumothorax may be present on one uh, location so try to find the uh, the boundary or the limitation of the pneumothorax and um, first we have to start this uh, probe from the anterior part of the chest and try to move the probe laterally and uh, you may find lung point now the uh, lung point is also very very interesting uh, thing to find if you are getting lung point uh, can you uh, run this video we can see here that the sliding sign is absent that means there is no movement of the pleura with the respiration uh, again, uh, uh, because this video is very small, so uh, you can see that uh, sliding first. We can see here that the sliding sign is absent. That means there is no movement of the pleura with the respiration. So you have seen that uh, uh, this uh, sliding sign will be absent in case of pneumothorax because now this uh, there is no pleural movement with the respiration because of air column. Now, uh, uh, try to recognize this lung point. As we have already discussed this, suppose this, there is a loculated, uh, there is a, uh, a small uh, pneumothorax, and this is the boundary of the limitation of the uh, pneumothorax. So this is the pneumo lung, and this is the normal lung. So here, this is the point where you get this uh, lung point. And if you are getting this lung point, that is very, very specific or pathognomic of the pneumothorax. So what is lung point? So lung point is the transition zone between normal lung and uh, new, this is normal lung and the pneumo lung. Or in other words, uh, it is a transition zone between the sliding positive and the sliding negative in 2D mode. Or in other words, it's a transition zone between C source sign and the barcode sign in the M mode mode. But remember, uh, this is this is the lung point. You can see this is the uh, uh, this is the C source sign and this is the barcode sign. So, but remember, in case of complete pneumothorax, when the pneumothorax is present all over the chest, you will not get this uh, lung point. So, we have a video for lung point. This is about lung point. You can see that on the right side the pleura is moving but on the left side pleura is not moving with the respiration. Uh, please run the video again because we, this, is very... this is about lung point. You can see that on the right side the pleura is moving but on the left side pleura is not moving with the respiration. Uh, 
Now we have uh, discussed the air column is present uh, between the two layers of the pleura. Now suppose uh, the fluid is uh, present between the two pleura. So uh, you can imagine this is the parietal pleura and this is the visceral pleura. Now the fluid or uh, any kind of uh, blood may also be there. So that is uh, the status is called pleural effusion. So uh, since uh, this um, uh, fluid is uh, accumulating the dependent zone, so mostly it is uh, uh, in the postrolateral uh, in location. So uh, we uh, we uh, try to use uh, curvilinear probe or this uh, uh, lower frequency uh, probe uh, at the mid axillary line uh, on the right side and the posterior axillary line on the left uh, side of the chest. And we will obtain this ultrasound image. And first of all, try to recognize uh, this bright hyperechoic curved like a structure that is called uh, diaphragm. So uh, diaphragm is a very, very important structure. Uh, if you uh, please develop your skill to recognize this uh, curved hyperechoic uh, structure, uh, then it will uh, it will make your life easier. So below the diaphragm, there's uh, uh, in the right side, the liver or in the left side is spleen. And uh, this uh, there is a characteristic uh, uh, appearance of this liver or spleen, and the lung is present above the diaphragm. So normally there is a mirror image uh, in the normal aerated healthy lung. There is a mirror image of this liver, but in case of pleural effusion, there, since there is an accumulation of the fluid in this uh, uh, upper part of the diaphragm, now ultrasound waves can uh, pass through this uh, this fluid structure. So uh, we have uh, discussed in the first um, uh, 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 class that the fluid is a hype, gives an hypoechoic appearances. So this uh, this is the uh, fluid of the pleural effusion, and that's why. You you are getting the uh, here is a black or hypoechoic appearance that is called anechoic zone. So when you are going uh, getting this anechoic zone, then uh, there is a probability of this uh, 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 there is a pleural effusion or blood may be uh, there. So uh, this is an echoic space between the two pleura, and this is uh, gravity dependent and above the diaphragm. And it acts like a window for the ultrasound beams. And sometimes you may see that the lung is floating within the uh, uh, pleural effusion. We have a video for uh, this pleural effusion. This clip is showing about pleural effusion. For obtaining this view, we have used curvilinear probe placed at mid axillary line. First of all, we have to recognize the bright hyperechoic line that is diaphragm. And above the diaphragm, we can see an echoic zone denoting pleural effusion. We can also appreciate lung is floating within the pleural effusion. Now, there are various signs of uh, uh, this pleural effusion. The one is an echoic sign. And also the, in the literature, you may find the quiet sign. So you can see that uh, this is a parietal uh, pleura and the visceral pleura and the fluid is uh, uh, present between the two. So there are four boundaries of this uh, uh, the pleural effusion. This is upper boundary. This is a uh, this is superior uh, and this is inferior and this is upper and this is lower. So uh, the, it is surrounded by the parietal and visceral pleura in the uh, in the uh, superior inferior part and this. Uh, in the upper part is the upper uh, uh, rib and its shadow. In the lower part, it is uh, lower rib and its uh, shadow. So sometimes it gives a uh, quiet sign, means quadrangular sign. You can see here. Then uh, another important sign is sinu uh, sinusoidal sign of the pleural effusion. So we have seen this is the fluid uh, in the 2D image. When you put an M mode image, uh, M mode. Uh, then you will get this uh, picture. So what is sinusoidal sign? Sinusoid is our sign, uh, uh, sign of the pleural effusion. You, you can obtain this sign in the M mode. This is sinusoid movement of the visceral pleura or the lung within the effusion with the respiration. So we can see that this is the uh, visceral pleura on the lung moving sinusoidally with the respiration within the pleural effusion. So, there's a unique appearance called sinusoid sign. 
now sometimes uh, uh, you may uh, get the spine sign or v line uh, it's also mentioned in the pleural effusion so, uh, so we have already seen that this is the diaphragm and below the diaphragm there is a liver and above the diaphragm there is a lung so uh, at this level the vertebral columns are present so uh, since the liver is a, a x as a acoustic window you can see the vertebral column below the liver so this these are the vertebral columns and you will in the normal he healthy lung you will not get this vertebral column so vertebral column and uh, this uh, spine sign or v like a structure in the normal lung is present only below the diaphragm but in case of pleural effusion since ultrasound waves now can cross here also you can see the vertebral column or a spine so, and uh, there is peculiar appearance of the inverted b like i said so if you are getting this spine appearance or v line appearance that's that is also a sign of uh, pleural effusion now whether uh, uh, the, uh, the fluid is exudate or transudate or this hemorrhage uh, is it is very difficult uh, to to establish but we, uh, there uh, there is some guidance uh, also if it is a transudate this will always will be anechoic in appearance and this will always in homogeneous in appearance but if it is exudate it may have certain internal echoes uh, within the fluid or it may be heterogeneous in appearance or it may be loculated like uh, this or septic so if you are getting this some echoes or uh, loculations that indicates exudate otherwise if you are uniformly anechoic that indicates transudate and as, uh, of course you have to do thoracosynthesis for the definitive diagnosis and you, uh, if you uh, want to do thoracosynthesis the ultrasound uh, guided thoracosynthesis is also a popular technique now about the quantitative uh, uh, assessment how much flu fluid is present uh, so uh, we have to measure the interpleural distance the the distance between the two pleura roughly 1 cm equivalent to 100 or 200 ml so that means the if if you are getting the 5 cm that means roughly 500 to 1000 ml is present inside the pleural cavity so but uh, the practically um, uh, the uh, the, uh, the dividing into mild moderate or severe uh, category of pleural effusion in more clinically uh, relevant of course you have to correlate with the uh, respiratory um, uh, condition of the patient for taking any uh, decision now we have finished the pleural pathology means we have finished this pneumothorax and the pleural effusion now we are moving towards the the parenchymal uh, part of the lung uh, uh, so uh, th that is also called interstitial syndrome so interstitial syndrome uh, after that we will discuss the alveolar syndrome so uh, regarding the interstitial syndrome uh, it may be uh, because of uh, edema or maybe because of uh, ards or fibrosis so first uh, first of all we will discuss the pulmonary edema it may be because of uh, this uh, cardiogenic or non cardiogenic edema so edema means accumulation of the fluid so first of all uh, consider cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema so uh, cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema because of uh, heart uh, failure so, so fluid is uh, starts accumulating within the lung because of increased hydrostatic uh, pressure so as the fluid starts accumulating the amount of air decreases and amount of fluid increases inside the lung so we we'll, uh, you will get this b line i have already mentioned that when the fluid starts accumulating that acts as a window to pass the ultrasound beams and they produce b lines so if the amount of fluid is less then uh, then the b lines are separated uh, you can count these b lines so, uh, so uh, this is the uh, subtle type of uh, uh, pulmonary edema in which the b lines are separated in some literature it has been mentioned that they are about 7 mm apart but another situation in which the fluid starts accumulating in the alveoli so uh, they now they are uh, crowded or fused together also cause cause coalescence 
so this uh, some book have uh, some uh, paper have mentioned this uh, septal edema is a b1 pattern or this uh, alveolar edema that is a b2 pattern now the non -cardi cardiogenic uh, edema remember this cardiogenic edema this b lines are always bilateral and homogeneous okay so bilateral homogeneous is the characteristic feature of this cardiogenic uh, pulmonary edema remember if it is not because of uh, cardiac origin then that means non cardiac edema uh, now the uh, the b lines will be non homogeneous okay the b lines are now non homogeneous in the cardiac it was homogeneous and in uh, between the b lines you also get some normal parenchymal uh, appearance so this in between the uh, b lines pathological lung if you are getting this normal uh, appearance of the lung that is called a uh, spared sign so a spared sign is the feature of this uh, ards pattern now the now along with this if you are getting this pleural abnormalities means pleura is irregular fragmented and thicken so that's denotes the pulmonary fibrosis so uh, if you are getting um, uh, this pl uh, this uh, pleural abnormalities along with the b pattern that indicates the uh, pulmonary fibrosis so we have discussed this uh, interstitial uh, syndrome that is pulmonary edema and eids now we are uh, discussing the alveolar syndrome regarding alveolar uh, syndrome there are two main things uh, we want to discuss the first is consolidation and second is atelectasis so first uh, discuss the uh, consolidations so consolidation uh, there are uh, uh, to simplify the things consolidation uh, pattern can be divided into two the first pattern is non translobar uh, cons uh, consolidation and also call shred sign because uh, the consolidation is present in the sub pleural uh, region and it uh, here the border between the uh, new uh, this consolidated lung and the new, uh, normal aerated lung this border is like shredded or fractured or irregular in appearance remember this is pleural border is not smooth in the normal healthy lung it is a smooth lining pleura but here you can see that pleural border is shredded or like irregular in appearance and also you are getting the sub pleural eco -pure, um, pure images so that is the unique character of this shredded pattern of the non translobar consolidation okay this is the initial phase of consolidation so uh, the consolidated uh, consolidation pattern have started just in the peripheral part of the uh, lung just below the pleura then it gives a unique threaded uh, pattern of non translobar consolidation now then the next part the consolidation involves the whole part of the lobe then it then it is called so take a video of this uh, threaded uh, pattern of the consolidation this is non translobal type of consolidation characterized by a thread sign here the pleural border between the consolidated lung and the aerated lung is irregular or threaded also called thread sign uh, can you run the video again because this is very important this is non translobal type of consolidation characterized by a thread sign here the pleural border between the consolidated lung and the aerated lung is irregular or threaded also called thread sign ah. so uh, previously uh, we have seen that uh, consolidation pattern has just started just uh, at the periphery just below the pleura and uh, that was a threaded pattern now the consolidated uh, pattern have involved the whole of the uh, this lobe now it is called the translobar pattern or tissue like pattern now you can see the this lung appears like a lever and this is heterogeneous in appearance and it looks like a lever so also called hepatitis of the lung so you can see that uh, there is a complete deaeration of the lung now almost the normal lung contains about more than 90% of the air 
now in the cons this uh, this uh, this hepatization of the lung this this consolidation pattern have almost there is loss of more than 90% of the air uh, and uh, of course uh, it may be associated with the pleural effusion okay so uh, one thing uh, uh, you have to understand that uh, pleural effusion may be because of this uh, uh, consolidation that is paranemonic effusion okay effusion. after that uh, we, uh, if you look closely this is the consolidated tissue pattern of the consolidation you can see these bright hyperechoic spots within the lung this is nothing but the bronchogram okay these white hyperechoic spots within the consolidated lung is air bronchogram it may be either uh, a static or dynamic so if it is moving with the respiration then it is called dynamic if it is not moving with the respiration then it is called a static air bronchogram okay so this is hyperechoic intraparenchymal uh, spots it may be uh, a static a static indicate that there is uh, this uh, this is non patent while dynamic uh, air bronchogram shows that there is a patent airway okay the air column is moving uh, that's why it is giving an appearance of the dynamic uh, bronchogram or it may be either punctiform or linear uh, in appearance so we have a video for air bronchogram you can see multiple hyperechoic spots within the intraparenchymal area of the consolidated lung. They are air bronchogram and they are moving with the respiration. So they are dynamic type of air bronchogram. Uh, so this air bronchogram is very difficult to obtain. Uh, so I request uh, to run the, this video again. Uh, you can see multiple hyperechoic spots within the intraparenchymal area of the consolidated lung. They are air bronchogram and they are moving with the respiration. So they are dynamic type of air bronchogram. So we have uh, seen that uh, this air bronchogram was moving with the respiration. That's why it was in uh, dynamic air bronchogram so and if, if it is not moving with the respiration that is called a static uh, bronchogram why i'm uh, stressing uh, upon this dynamic and static because dynamic air bronchogram is the characteristic feature of the consolidation and if it is a static type then it indicates about uh, uh, this atelectasis pattern so now we are moving to uh, the atelectasis uh, pattern you can see the uh, uh, atelectasis because of this compression by this uh, large amount of uh, pleural effusion you can see the, this la large amount of pleural effusion and it has compressed the lung that is called atelectasis so it is also having the tissue like pattern and here the dynamic bronchogram is absent uh, and that means there is a, a loss of uh, the patency of the airway and mostly it is uh, associated with the larger amount of pleural effusion so uh, to make the things uh, very easy to understand that uh, consolidation is mostly associated with the uh, mild amount of effusion or the moderate amount of effusion but if you are getting this larger amount of pleural effusion so then mostly the it is associated with the uh, this atelectasis so we have a video for atelectasis here we have used the curvilinear probe placed at the posterolateral part of the chest and above the diaphragm we can see the tissue like pattern of the lung this is atelectasis and the lung is floating within the large amount of pleural effusion So um, uh, the last part of pathological uh, lung is uh, uh, subcutaneous emphysema. So if you are, uh, there is a uh, air column is uh, present within the subcutaneous tissue, you will get this E lines. And E, uh, e just for remembrance, this E for emphysema. 
Okay, if you are getting the E lines uh, that denote the subcutaneous emphysema. Okay, so this E lines uh, uh, looks very similar to B lines, but there is a difference. While B lines starts from the pleura, so E lines starts from the, the subcutaneous tissue and it is also vertical hyperechoic going to the bottom of the screen. And all the things, all the normal things, battering sign and the pleural line, all the things will will uh, can't be seen because of this uh, air column and it produces e lines. So if you are uh, suspecting a subcutaneous emphysema, uh, you may uh, get this uh, e lines. So we have uh, uh, almost uh, cover all the pathological uh, part of the lung. So uh, there is a concept of what are the zones uh, uh, for examination. So if you are able to examine this uh, when the patient is in supine, uh, this uh, was described by the uh, Volpicelli that uh, uh, take three lines. First line is uh, from the parasternal uh, line. Then the second line is from anterior axillary line. Then third line you draw in the posterior uh, axillary line. So the zone between uh, this uh, first uh, parasternal and anterior axillary line is called zone anterior zone. And the zone between the anterior axillary and the posterior axillary is called uh, lateral zone. And be, uh, after this posterior axillary and uh, this paraspinal is called posterior zone. If you want to examine when the patient is supine, they have uh, described eight zone. That means four on each side. This is zone one, this is zone two, zone three, and zone four. And there is, uh, there is a one line uh, at the level of uh, the fourth or fifth interpostural space. So anterior zone can be divided into a, a one, that is upper anterior, and the zone two, that is lower anterior. Zone three is uh, upper lateral, and zone four is uh, a basal lateral. So uh, there are eight zones you can examine here. So uh, if you are also able to examine when the, when the when a patient is allowed for the seating position, you can. There is a concept of uh, this uh, six zone uh, per side. That means total will be uh, twelve zones. So grossly uh, different uh, uh, people follow different concept. Uh, so uh, grossly this is very easy to understand. This is four zone on each side. The total will be eight zones. So now we are, uh, this blue protocol is very famous, uh, described by uh, Lachin's uh, time. He uh, he's, uh, uh, the pioneer in the, the in the field of uh, lung ultrasound. And uh, Lechenstein have uh, described this blue protocol. This is called bedside lung ultrasound in emergency. And uh, this protocol used to find out what is the cause of acute respiratory failure in case of emergency. So blue protocol uh, described by this uh, Legenstein has, uh, uh, this is the blue protocol uh, um, a stepwise approach. So uh, first of all, uh, he described that first we have to, um, uh, first we have to find whether the sliding sign is present or not present. If it is present, then we have to follow this pathway. If it is not present, then we have to follow this pathway. So suppose the like, sliding sign is present. Then if it is A line, is if you can find A lines, that is normal A lines, then in addition to that, we have to uh, scan this uh, uh, this uh, thrombose vent for the uh, leg veins. So in addition to A profile, you are getting this uh, thrombosed vein, then the diagnosis will be pulmonary embolism. Remember, we are trying to find out the cause of acute respiratory failure. That, uh, that, that is uh, where the blue protocol is used. So if the A profile you are getting and there is no uh, DVT scan, uh, scan positive, then you, you may suspect the COPD or a stoma. And if you are getting this sliding sign, and if you are getting B line or B profile, that is the cause of pulmonary edema. So that is the pathway of sliding sign present. And there is another pathway, the, when the sliding sign is absent. So uh, he, the Lechenstein, have described if the sliding sign is absent, he described as the A dash profile or B profile, B dash profile or A prime profile. So if the sliding sign is absent and you are getting A lines, that is A dash profile, 
And if you are getting this lung uh, point, the diagnosis is pneumothorax. But if the sliding sign is absent and you are getting uh, these B lines, then the diagnosis will be pneumonia. And uh, that's the uh, blue protocol. The blue protocol is very famous all over the world. But uh, 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 somehow I'm not a fond of this blue protocol. So I have uh, struggled a lot. And uh, I have divided this, uh, uh, this uh, protocol uh, for myself. And uh, if you like, you can also use this. So this is uh, uh, this is a, uh, this is a simple algorithm which I have uh, tried to make this uh, algorithm very simple. This is about lung ultrasound algorithm. I have divided into a a pattern, b pattern, and c pattern. If you are getting a lines, then it uh, it's simply normal uh, indicating to us a normal lung that is a pattern. If you are getting a sliding sign. And if the DVT is negative, then the diagnosis will be a stoma or COPD. If your, uh, the DVT scan is positive, then diagnosis will be pulmonary embolism. Now, A lines are present. Now the sliding sign is absent. That any in addition to that, you are getting this lung point. That diagnosis will be pneumothorax. If you remember, the sliding sign absent, lung point present, diagnosis is pneumothorax. Now, the B line, if you are getting B lines, that means B pattern, then you, you may divide into interstitial syndrome or alveolar syndrome. In the interstitial syndrome, if you are getting this B lines bilateral homogeneous, diagnosis will be cardiogenic pulmonary edema. If the B lines are not homogeneous, but they are non-homogeneous. Then the diagnosis will be ARDS. And in addition to the, you may also get this uh, spared sign. And if the B lines are focal or unilateral, the diagnosis, most probable diagnosis will be pneumonia. And if uh, you are getting this alveolar pattern, you if you are getting this dynamic air bronchogram, the diagnosis will be consolidation. Either it may be shredded pattern or tissue-like pattern. But if you're not getting this dynamic air bronchogram, the most probability is atelectasis. Now, this C pattern, if you're getting this consolidated pattern, in addition to uh, the anechoic zone, that means uh, sinusoid sign in the M mode and any any quake in the B mode, and if you in addition to that, if you are getting a spine sign positive, a V line positive, then the diagnosis will be pleural effusion. And if you are get, uh, you are suspecting subcutaneous emphysema, and you are getting this E lines, all the other things will be absent. Uh, straight forward, the diagnosis will be uh, subcutaneous emphysema. So I I have struggled a lot. Uh, then I uh, make this uh, try to make this simple algorithm for myself. Now uh, uh, till now uh, we have uh, discussed uh, about the normal lung and the pathological lung. Now we, uh, imagine uh, the remember the first uh, scenario: the 52 year old male with the history of COPD, and the ejection fraction 40 percent comes with the dyspnea. So if, the, if there is a history of COPD, if there is ex less ejection fraction, so uh, most probably it may be because of respiratory pathology and if uh, it may be because of cardiac in origin, the cause of dyspnea. So simply you have to uh, keep your probe. If you are getting this A profile, then most probably it is because of COPD exacerbations. If you are getting A profile, most probably it is not because of cardiac uh, pathology. But if you are getting B profile, that means there are multiple B lines, then most probably B, there is a pulmonary edema or cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and most probably because of there is a cardiac uh, problem. And if you are getting uh, this uh, B problem, then <coughs> this is how to differentiate between the two. In the second scenario, uh, you are uh, evaluating a, a hypoxic patient. And there is a history that the patient was recently intubated, and there is a left subclavian artery line placement. So uh, there is two important clues here. The patient is recently intubated, 
and the, there is recently left-sided subclavian placed. Now, patient is developing this hypoxia. So there, uh, most probably there are two things. Either there, there is some problem with the intubation or there is some problem with the central line placement. Now the findings are, uh, lung ultrasound findings are, there is a absent sliding on the left side and there is B lines are also absent and lung pulse is also absent. So all the things are absent. That is most probably because of central line develop pneumothorax. But remember, if you are getting sliding sign absent, B line absent, but you are getting lung pulse. Okay. Now the lung pulse you are getting on the left side. The most probably it is, if you are getting lung pulse, that means the pneumothorax is ruled out. So it may be because of right-sided bronchial intubation. Okay, then if you remove the uh, this uh, endotracheal tube, a little uh, in the upward direction, and uh, then uh, on, on on the left side you may uh, might get this sliding sign positive, and so thus uh, uh, these are the, the simple case scenario that will help in uh, uh, making the uh, DD. So all the things we have discussed, but. Uh, 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 regarding this recent pandemic uh, era of the COVID-19, the importance of lung ultrasound have increased tremendously. So uh, I'm, we are also trying to cover what is the application of uh, this uh, lung ultrasound regarding this uh, proper diagnosis and uh, proper management of this uh, COVID patient uh, admitted in the ICU. So as we uh, as we know that traditional method of examination of the chest is either auscultation, X-ray, and the CT. So in uh, suppose the you the patient you are in the ICU and managing this COVID uh, patient, a patient is uh, having the respiratory pathology. So regarding auscultation, it uh, there is a high risk of nosocomial uh, infection. Regarding X-ray, there's a rather an issue of contamination. If uh, you have to call an X-ray um, uh, X-ray machine, X-ray technician, and of course, X-ray correlate poorly with the clinical picture. Regarding CT examination, you have to uh, transport the patient to the CT room, and th there is a risk of transported uh, transportation for the critically unwell patient is also high. So here is a solution of the using ultrasound. And remember, uh, it's better idea to use single instrument and a single uh, clinician, uh, and try to use uh, try to avoid uh, using multiple instrument and a multiple uh, clinician. So regarding this uh, aspect, uh, the safety of the healthcare in uh, work is very very important. So ultrasound <coughs> for both, both the parts, it can examine your lung as well as well as it can make the imaging also so that you can make the DD. And if you have this wireless pocket devices, uh, then it is uh, very much suitable for this COVID issue. So uh, most uh, it has been seen that uh, most of the lung pathology in the COVID patient are situated peripheral in location. So in these locations, ultrasound is very, very useful to detecting this lung pathology. So uh, there is a, uh, there is a evidence that uh, Lomero at all in his ICU uh, in the, have uh, a study in the 22 patient the COVID patient at their uh, in the out of 22 patient the more uh, the findings are the second plural line in three patient that is 13 percent A lines were present in only one patient in the four percent. And the B, you can see the B lines were present in all the 22 patients. That means 100 percent in the all 100 patients of, of the COVID patient, they have find B lines. And the consolidation pattern uh, was also around 30 percent. Uh, remember, this plural effusion is very very less, around only one patient. There is uh, there is another uh, important uh, a study. By Chinese Critical Care Ultrasound uh, Study Group, this is CCUSG group, they have summarized their findings of the ultrasound of the lung. First, there's a thickening and irregular uh, plural line. 
second important find b lines there are multiple variety of b lines remember b lines is almost 100% uh, of finding it may be either focal multifocal or confluent and consolidation is also an important finding this viral uh, uh, pneumonia this is either multifocal or translobar or non translobar you may also get a bare bronchogram within the consolidation area and if you are uh, if the patient is recovering then you might get this a lines remember this a line is a is the recognition of this a uh, this normal healthy lung if you are getting a line that means the patient is in recovery phase and one of the very interesting finding that the pleural effusion is very very uncommon in this covid 19 uh, patients so this is uh, all about uh, 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 about a lung ultrasound so if uh, anybody ask uh, want to ask any question i will happy to answer all the hmm. thank you dr neeraj for that very interesting presentation i know there are very multiple signs nearly 20 of them are there in the lung ultrasound and uh, it becomes uh, really difficult for to demonstrate them in the web uh, web media it is uh, it is easier to demonstrate them when you are live and when people are surrounding you but uh, you have made it interesting and made it so every and i must say that algorithm is very interesting what you are saying compared to the blue protocol we can even study it uh, for its efficiency also compared to the blue protocol whether it is easier to understand though that also looks very complicated to me one <laughs> thing what i want to stress here is we have moved from a era where we used to feel that air is the enemy of the ultrasound to now to use it along with the air uh, air as air and the tissue interface as medium to there are so many things as well as to look at the therapeutic options also so thank you for the wonderful presentation yes punaya you want to make some comments <clears throat> yes neeraj thank you for the very lucid and very candid talk i hope in the next sessions also we'll be covering the basics of ultrasound next so what do you have neeraj for the next class we can uh, do uh, cardiac ultrasound basic echocardiography we can cover yeah that would be interesting and after, so and after that we will cover uh, this air i have combined this airway ultrasound and diaphragm ultrasound because airway ultrasound related to intubation and the, this is uh, tracheostomy procedures and diaphragm ultrasound is related to the the weaning and extubation uh, the icu patient so i will combine both this uh, airway ultrasound and this diaphragm ultrasound regarding int intubation on the one aspect and the extubation on the another aspect so next class uh, maybe we do basic echocardiography and the uh, next to next class we can do this airway and the diaphragm ultrasound i think that would be interesting and uh, it will make uh, <clears throat> things very very practical in day to day practice mm. uh, so that's the case uh, shall we wind up today dr prasanna yeah anything a uh, few questions were asked like that so one of the viewers asked where to find these materials to read any book you suggest that which you are following up uh, dr neeraj uh, i i have uh, not read uh, any kind of book for since years i only read articles recent articles i only read there are so many interesting articles if anybody wants uh, interesting article i can uh, email those articles but regarding book i have no knowledge okay 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 fine so somebody asked and then uh, yeah that's it i think one last point what i want to stress is that see the lung ultrasound is uh, what we need not remember all the signs if you are able to understand the pathophysiology of the disease and how the ultrasound is and it is still more easy in terms that you can use a linear probe you can use a curvy linear probe or you can use a cardiac probe any of the probe you can use for the lung ultrasound as compared to the other part of the body ultrasound so you need a specific probe for specific this uh, diagnosis or seeing the part here that one advantage is there and compared to that eight zones we should practice i think that uh, because 12 zones 6 plus 6 is not possible most of the time when we use as a point of care ultrasound patient will be supine sleeping so we should make sure that uh, what i have seen in my practice most of the people keep in this uh, anterior area and uh, try to diagnose it so when we do that we have to see all the four areas 
and then look at the all the pathologies whether anything is present along with that sometimes the pathologies can coexist so that's one of the things so we should practice in uh, routinely that 4 plus 4 areas 8 areas completely and then to try to interpret the uh, lung pathology based on the clinical presentation also that not isolatedly diagnose only the ultrasound but based on the clinical presentation is your final thoughts on this neeraj yes uh, you are absolutely right uh, ultrasound is the only one uh, of the uh, one of the material that is solving the clinical uh, puzzle we have to integrate this ultrasound uh, findings with the history uh, proper history and proper clinical uh, context to, for making the proper uh, diagnosis Another, th another thing I want to stress upon that, uh, previously we, as, uh, the radi radiologist uh, were uh, performing this uh, lung ultrasound, but I will uh, strongly recommend that uh, bedside clinicians should, uh, should uh, develop their skill for lung ultrasound because he in a very, very good position, see, he or she knows the proper history, he knows the proper clinical condition, he has the ability, he has the, uh, the desire to treat the patient, so he should do the bedside ultrasound to, uh, to correlate all the clinical findings, to correlate the history, proper history, uh, and correlate all these findings to the ultrasound finding to make a final uh, diagnosis, rather than depending upon the NA radiologist and send the critical patient to the this uh, ultrasound room. So okay, the, Dr. Niraj, Dr. Akshat yeah. is here. He has a question. Dr. Akshat, yes, your yes. question, please. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. So it was a very nice lecture. I enjoyed it. Uh, ah, thank you. Sir, is there, a time, is there a timetable or a schedule that uh, you follow uh, regarding the series of lectures? I'm new to this channel actually. Okay, so uh, usually we, depending on the faculty availability and uh, topics, we <clears throat> inform in advance through our Facebook page, Twitter page, and the YouTube page. You can follow in that. And also, if you miss a class, it should be always there in our page. The, 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 the entire session is recorded and you, it can be replayed any times. It, it is in the Facebook and it is in the YouTube also. You subscribe to our channel Classroom, where you will get all the presentations uh, we have done last in the three to four years. Everything is available. Do go through it. It is a very good academic material. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Akshat. Yes, Dr. Punaya, over to you. We can wind up the uh, session for today. If, if anybody yeah. wants to do any question. Uh, not many questions were there, actually. But uh, oh, everybody appreciated. People are asking talk. about the... About the uh, <coughs> uh, Keisha wanted to discuss something. Yeah, about uh, lung, lung pulse. pulse. He wanted lung pulse. to elaborate on that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, again, repeat the question. Lung pulse, lung about pulse. lung pulse. We saw the video of the lung oh, pulse. Oh, okay, okay. Lung pulse. So remember, this uh, sliding sign and the lung pulse, uh, uh, sometimes people confuse it. Sliding sign, if you remember, the movement of the pleura with the respiration, with the respiration, that is sliding sign. And the, uh, uh, regarding this lung pulse, movement of the pleura with the heart pulsation. Suppose heart is beating here and it is transmitted to the pleura, from the visceral pleura to the parietal pleura. But you, you can get this lung pulse only when, when you are getting uh, this sliding sign is absent. If the sliding sign is absent and you are getting this heart pulsation transmitted to the pleura. So it appears like a T-shaped appearance uh, and it is better appreciated in the AM mode. So that is the lung pulse. Lung pulse is the movement of the pleura synchronized with the Position of the heart. Okay, Dr. Neeraj, thank you so much, and uh, we'll meet up in the next class as we discussed. It will be a <coughs> session on the basic echocardiogram in uh, critical care. Thanks, Dr. Prasanna, for your valuable time. So thank we'll you. wind up the session. Thank you, Neeraj, and thank you, Prasanna. And, and I'm again thanking uh, Dr. Prasanna and Dr. Kapil for pro providing uh, some useful videos for this class. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Kapil. So, yeah. Okay, so we'll meet you in the next class. We'll keep you well in advance. So that we will be doing the 
a co choreograph but before that on saturday evening uh, we have an interesting uh, discussion with none other than dr uh, professor h h dash and dr virender their team are going to present the practical cases which they came across during this covid pandemic the neuro emergency cases which presented to them and some of them who turned out positive and how they managed that so that will be discussed on coming saturday in the evening i'll keep you posted regarding that and that's going to be a very interesting practical session considering the situation which is happening around each one of us uh, nowadays so with that today's session i'll close it and uh, i'll meet you on saturday thank you thank you thank you